Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Salmon Trout Steelheader podcast. I have today with me Landon Connerton of Washington Coon Shrimp. And Landon, if you could tell uh, tell us just a little bit about who you are and what you do with Washington Coon Shrimp. Well, my name is Landon, um, and we started a small fishing bait company late 2014. And uh, what we do here is cure process and wholesale cured shrimp it's quite the operation now uh, things are a lot different today than they were five years ago uh, oh for sure so with with one of these shrimp what are we talking for size oh inch and three quarter to two and a half inches there's the average size in our 16 ounce jar and then we have a 19 ounce jar which we call the large and those are uh, two and a half inches up to five or six inches. They're big ones. Now, as far as fish goes, what are you primarily fishing for with your shrimp? Primarily uh, winter run and summer run steelhead, along with spring chinook. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people uh, don't really know, or maybe they're real quiet. Uh, spring or season people get closed mouth. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Coon shrimp work very well. So what type of a rig are we talking for springers? Uh, springers, the bank guys, uh, will fish them below a spinning glow. Mm -hmm. And then the guys east uh, of Longview, south and east of Longview, will troll them mm -hmm. uh, behind a smiley blade or a spinner blade. Prawn spinner, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Which is awesome. So tell us a little bit about um, the spinner species of steelhead specifically and what you do there with your coon shrimp and what type of fisheries are you doing are these bank or boat so i i personally fish a lot out, a lot out of a boat mm -hmm. um i've had a couple sleds so far uh i, I really enjoy back trolling mm -hmm. uh sometimes when the water is real high I'll, I'll do some anchor fishing but i specifically like to back troll and when i do that i use uh, a brad's diver or a maglip mm -hmm. as my diver I have pretty good success for winter steelhead and, and summer runs on coon shrimp. That is my oh. go-to bait. So back trolling with a diver, essentially. And then you have a um, spin glow in front of the coon shrimp there? I do most of the time. When the water's real low, I run it naked. Oh, okay. Hook and coon shrimp with no other beads, no, yep. no blades, no nothing. If the water's real low. Yeah, okay. And that's how far behind the diver? When it's super low, about four feet. Oh, okay, cool. And then uh, otherwise, you're typically going to run that spin glow. Do you have any favorite colors you like to run along with your coon shrimp? I like orange mm -hmm. with mylar wings, uh, size 10. Okay. And that's okay. a lot smaller than most people run. Yeah. And I've I've got a few spring chinook on. Cool. Yeah. A super small spin glows. Okay. Do you do much additives to your coon shrimp like on the go? Do you are you a big scent guy or do you just kind of stick with what you're here? I do add scent uh, sometimes. Uh, Washington Coon Shrimp has become very popular in the past few years, so I'll change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Don't want to compete against your own bait. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but typically, though, uh, I don't uh, mm -hmm. do anything different. I try to fish away from the crowds. Yeah. So, uh, but if you're around other people, may play around with it. Yeah, if I'm around a bunch of people, uh, I might put some tune on it or something yeah for sure cool so now have you always been a bait fisherman no i i switched to the dark side about 2011 so <laughs> <laughs> what it, is the dark side the bait side the or? bait side's the dark yep. side i was an avid uh steelhead fisherman swinging flies cool yeah uh, and then as a gag gift around 2010 uh, i received a bobber and jig rod and somehow it ended up in my boat mm -hmm. and I'm floating the clam and I notice it and I hooked and landed the steel hood on the first cast oh okay and swinging flies typically on the clam in March and April uh, that's not something that happens yeah absolutely so that's a so so you would say you were a bit of a, a purist when it came to flies though at the time Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
I didn't really dry fly fish for steelhead. Mm-hmm. I used, I dredged, I used sink tips and, yeah, and yeah. heavy flies. Uh, but I, I would average about 10 steel, hut, 10 winter steelhead on the Klamath mm-hmm. a year. Uh, at that time I worked a work schedule of 30 days on 30 days off. Yeah. And I was on my off time and I landed 45 steelhead uh, on the, on that river in a couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, things changed after that. Yeah. I mean, there's just, there's no question it's effective. And when it comes to coon shrimp, um, I've had, of course, the opportunity to see how, um, effective coon shrimp are over the years fishing for summer steelhead specifically. And last year, I don't know how many jars of bait I went through, um, and, and caught a lot of steelhead on a bad year, um, on your shrimp. And it's funny, even though I went through a lot of jars, it's not like they didn't last multiple trips they did it's like those those baits stay on um and then they just catch fish <laughs> i like the consistency yeah uh, we, we strive on that um uh, i hand select and sort every shrimp that goes in the jars yeah uh when things get super busy in june uh july i have a couple really good friends of mine uh that come over and and help out uh my dear friend kurt uh, is the one that turned me on to these shrimp uh, about seven years ago. Mm-hmm. For sure. And what what was it like when you started fishing shrimp in the first place and your fishing experience? I was hesitant because I was used to swinging feathers. Yeah. Um, and then I got introduced into a shrimp that was pink and sometimes stained. Yeah. And then we hooked a couple fish, and then I started curing some, and they weren't really, uh, they, they weren't that good. Mm-hmm. And then uh, went through around a thousand pounds to come up with the cure we have now. That's awesome. My, my brother-in-law is a chemical engineer, and he redefined the curing process and the cure that we are using today. Wow. Well. Um... How much of that are you willing to give away as far as secrets for our listeners today? I would rather, uh, next question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the shrimp quality. You talked about you go through and you sort and uh, you take good care of your shrimp. That's certainly something I've noticed, you know, just buying the buying the shrimp off the uh, shelves. So what is it, or what are you looking for in a shrimp when you say this is a good one to put into that jar? Uh, so we, we hand select them, uh, and then I check to make sure there's antennas and eyes. Uh, the heads are firm. They're all intact. Remember, these things are caught uh, in a net, and some are caught in pots, so they do get damaged. Um, and then we discard them. Uh, last year, we discarded between twelve and 1,300 pounds. Wow. Uh, that... that that didn't make the cut. Mm-hmm. So you're just taking that straight off the top. It just didn't make the cut. Yes, and it's kind of a bummer deal because then I got a. I already bought them, yeah. and then now I have to pay to dispose of them. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, I guess uh, I guess that's just kind of the the model you're going for is you know super high quality bait, and that's. I mean, I guess that that's why people tend to to buy it it's very popular at the stores that it's in maybe for listeners you know there's a ton of listeners and and readers that are just outside of the area that we're in here why don't you tell it tell us about where you're located and where you're fishing so ours our company is located in longview washington uh, i fish a lot on the Callets, the north fork of the lewis and the lower columbia uh, for both salmon and steelhead Cool. And uh, so for this area, what stores do you serve? How far does that stretch out? I mean, I don't know if you can list them all or anything, but uh, there's uh, for people that would maybe want to pick up a jar of your shrimp, Washington Coon Shrimp, where should they be looking? Okay, so uh, our furthest north location is in Auburn, Washington at Auburn Sports and Marine. And our furthest south location is Fishfield in Tigard, Oregon. Mm-hmm. And the furthest east location from Longview is at Main Street Chevron. 
And then uh, where, is, where is that? That's right off Highway 14 okay. in Stevenson, Washington. Oh, okay, yeah, Stevenson over there. Cool. And so, and a lot of other stores in between. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. So cool. Well, I mean, it's uh, it's definitely nice to fish a, a shrimp that's consistent. So what do you, what does it take to kind of keep your cure and your whole secrets in order as far as that goes? How do you keep everything consistent? Are you just very consistent on your measuring? And I don't, you know, I have no idea what's going into it. Yes, we're very consistent. Uh, and I'm fortunate enough to have uh, ample time off from work. I work a week on week off schedule. Yeah. Um, and the garage that we... Uh, do our bait in it's not really open to the public and the couple guys that help me uh, Kurt and Jamie and Mr. Frost uh, mm -hmm. keep the secrets between us yep Mr. Frost good man but he does keep the secrets he does yeah so one side to this whole equation is shipping bait that is something you do correct I personally do not retail uh, any of our products but we do have three retailers that ship bait uh the first one is angler west oh yes right in woodland there correct woodland washington the other one is fishfield yeah. down Ta south and yeah. tiger great shot yeah uh and the third one is pacific coast outdoors cool uh and they can ship it to your door so where are people buying this is it mostly a northwest thing it's the we sell most of it in the northwest but it it's recently made a pretty good impact in Louisiana. Louisiana? Yeah, that's I what I said. I haven't heard about Louisiana steelhead or salmon. <laughs> no, we, we think that they're using it uh, for catfish, but not quite oh, wow. sure what's going on down well, there. Catfish like a stinky bait. Uh, well, we, we got it covered. Yep. Uh, and then recently, uh, I believe it's in uh, Michigan. Uh-huh, yep. Utah, Pennsylvania. Mich Utah. See, I get the Michigan and Pennsylvania. There's a lot of steelhead there, but Utah, that's another one. They must be running it for trout, big trout or something. You know, I'm not I'm not sure. I don't I don't ask a lot of those guys questions. Yeah. Um but I don't know. Northern California, it's 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 going to Northern California every week. Cool. Um yep. There's some great fisheries down there. Oh, phenomenal fisheries down there. So, well, that is that is pretty cool to hear. So, it sounds like um, even if you don't have a shop near you, you can try these Washington Coon Shrimp at any one of those three stores that Landon mentioned. So I would definitely keep that in mind. Um, I know that, uh, I know one guy in particular out in Michigan that said they are deadly effective out there. It's just, you can't find them. Well, these guys will ship it to your door. There we go. Give it a shot. Yep. It's popular here. Uh, it's very popular. Oh yeah, everybody knows the coon shrimp program is the way to go in the Columbia for steelhead and everything. So it's be cool to see it spread elsewhere as well. So for anglers that are fishing coon shrimp, what's the best way to keep them in good condition and handle them when they're out fishing? You have any tips? The biggest tip is is don't shake them. Uh, they are a natural product, and they can uh, break the antennas and break the eyes off. They will damage the head. Um, you can keep them cold. Uh, we work with several professional fishing guides, and um, one of them, a good friend of mine, uh, does not like to buy frozen water, and he does not keep them cold. Mm -hmm. And he, he still manages to catch hundreds of steelhead a year. Hmm. Uh, but I personally recommend keeping them cold. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, so he's uh, he prefers not to have them cold. Yes, and I've talked to him about this lots of times, and um, he catches a lot of fish. Yeah, no question. Can't argue with that, but then again, there's so many fish being caught by the cold ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Maybe they just uh, work in general. For me, I like just uh, being able to buy a jar, put it in my fridge, and then what I like to do is... I'm typically not fishing a whole jar so i'm uh i'm gonna go out there because these things last i'm not changing out baits constantly um or casting them off so for me i like just having a jar and then i put a couple into a ziploc bag maybe i bring three different ziploc bags with sh uh, shrimp in them and two of them i keep 
um, in, a, in the in a cold you know little refrigerator and then one of them I keep right next to me while I'm fishing and then you can always play around with scent that way and stuff too and throw some different things in the bags and stuff but I mean for me in a day of fishing they hold up really well all the way to the end even if they are a little warmer but absolutely uh and that comes into the our strict guidelines of what shrimp make it into the jar yeah um the shrimp that i fish with and that i take guided trips with mm -hmm. is the same exact shrimp that you buy at bob sporting goods or angler west it is the same exact bait huh that is awesome so there's no special proprietary stuff for landing going on you already no you already gave away the farm essentially yeah i i fish the same stuff um well i'm just... gonna i'm gonna fish in front of you with your bait <laughs> see what happens okay yep see how much of it is the bait and how much of it is the uh, program so so one last thing here in that uh lower columbia area that you live next to and fish uh there's a lot of opportunity for salmon and steelhead so when you've had the time to do it, what uh, what kind of success have you had with these shrimp down here in the in the area? Huge success. The summer run steelhead, uh, sockeye. We get hundreds of them a year. Um, I fish sometimes by myself, and a ten fish day is is very common. And this for summer run steelhead using Washington coon shrimp. Uh, my highest day ever uh, was 2015. One rod. I landed 26 steelhead. Goodness, yeah. And that was a good year for a, for a run, but that's still incredible for one rod. Yeah, it was, uh, I never imagined that would happen. That's unreal. I come from a fly fishing background. And yeah. So what what rig were you running that day? I was running a two spinning glow setup, mm -hmm. uh, a dropper, about a six inch dropper uh -huh. to a three way. And then off that three way, a 12 inch leader uh-huh to a double hook setup uh, and a size 10 spinning glow and then 18 inches from the three-way to the next three-way a single hook to another uh, size 10 spinning glow hmm. uh, both of them are tipped with shrimp and i i personally fish the whole shrimp yeah um and i i half hitch them and put them on as straight as possible well, that sounds like a good day of fishing to me. Let's talk right quick before we leave here about sockeye. You mentioned sockeye. Um, being that it's 2020 and we are predicted, projected, and we all know how up and down those projections can be, but we're projected to have a good run of sockeye this year. What would you recommend for anglers for bank fishing or boat fishing for sockeye with coon shrimp? Uh, the same, same rig I, I said. Um the sockeye seem to like the smaller spinning glows, uh, a size 10 or 12, and that's just my opinion. A uh, size 12 is really small. Mm -hmm. uh, a size 10 is about the size of the average thumbnail. Hmm. Uh, and then the most common way that I've seen people fish and how I fish is I use just the tail for the sockeye. Interesting. Okay. Uh, just a little smaller bait. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the sockeye fishery is, is hopefully will be as good as they're predicting. It's a good one. Those fish hit hard. Yeah, they're fun to catch. Yeah. Not as big as a steelhead, but they are uh, chrome, and they have some pretty violent takedowns, too. Yes. Um, and they taste good. Yeah. Oh, boy. Most importantly. They, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, do they taste good. Well, awesome. Man, I am just uh, excited for this summer, fishing for sockeye, fishing for summer steelhead. Probably one of my favorite fisheries, just that you can uh, be out in the sun and catch super chrome hard fighting fish. Yes, it's my favorite fishery of the year, summer on steelhead. Uh, I like to wear shorts and flip flops yeah. <laughs> and catch fish. Oh, it's great. All right, well, thanks, Landon. Um, we'll talk to you soon and hope to uh, fish with you soon as well. Well, it was a pleasure, Lucas. Thank you for your time. What is your website, Landon? It's River City Guide Service. Uh, it got up and running last. It got up and running April of two thousand twenty. Uh, awesome. We're still working on a couple things, but it is up and running. Yeah, and uh, and what fisheries do you primarily guide? Because we we've, we've talked about your uh, your bait business here, but but that's one side of it as well. You uh, 
you guide and show your techniques for for steelhead isn't that is that correct steelhead and then any other fisheries that you do yeah steelhead uh and some salmon trips mm -hmm. our trips are very limited mm -hmm. uh, just to my uh, due to the schedule mm -hmm. um I, I work a week on week off and then I jar bait uh, between 40 and 60 hours a week busy from, man from April to yeah. August goodness got your hands in a lot of bait all day so yes we uh will jar of about 175 pounds this week goodness all right well I should leave you to your work then <laughs> all right thanks Landon all right thanks Landon all right